Man, it's not often <clears throat> I make three videos in one night, but so damn much happened today. I, I'm watching the world burn, huh? Holy shit. I mean, man, I tell you, things are moving. But uh, let me just give you uh, one of the uh, channels on Rumble that I do get a lot of my information from. This is a Russian channel. Um, so let's just listen to them for just a minute. Uh, of course, we were listening to the Russian opera in the last video. So let's get into this. The armed forces of the Russian Federation continue the special military operation. In the Kupiansk direction, Russian forces launched strikes with artillery and aviation at the units of the armed forces of Ukraine near Kislovka, Berestovoye in Kharkov region and Novoselovskoye of Lugansk People's Republic. Five hostile sabotage and reconnaissance groups have been eliminated near Kislovka, Olshana, Tabayevka, Rachmalve and Pershatravnivoye of Kharkov region. The enemy has lost over 30 personnel, two armored fighting vehicles and three pickups in the cross the Mount direction. Complex fire attacks launched by Russian units at the Ukrainian armed forces have resulted in the elimination of over 100 Ukrainian personnel, four armed fighting vehicles and three motor vehicles near Stalmakovka, Novolubovka, Nevskoye of Lugansk People's Republic, Serebryanka and Grigorovka of Donetsk People's Republic. In the Donetsk direction, Russian forces continued successful offensive. Air and artillery strikes have resulted in the irretrievable losses of up to 70 Ukrainian personnel, one tank, three armored fighting vehicles and four motor vehicles. In the south and east direction, complex fire strikes launched at Ukrainian armed forces units have resulted in the elimination of up to 30 Ukrainian personnel, two armored fighting vehicles and three motor vehicles, near Novomikhailovka, Ruchistovka and Novoselka of the next People's Republic. Operational, tactical and army aviation, missile troops and artillery have neutralized to Ukraine. All right, so you can go to Rumble and <clears throat> get that information for yourself. Uh, I've just been kind of disseminating through all of the the videos on Rumble and YouTube, and uh, um, man, I tell you, it's uh, I just got a report on all of this. Um, I don't know what these globalists are thinking. I mean, we're, we're, we're Ukraine. I mean, it's already in a world of hurt. I mean, I can't believe the number of lives that have been lost over there. And that, uh, you know, like I said in my previous video, that all of these uh, globalist uh, lunatics are going to profit on all of this. <clears throat> you know, Raytheon's going to make a ton of money. Uh, BlackRock's going to make a ton of money. Uh, um, I'm sure that a lot of politicians are going to make a ton of money. And they just seem to don't care about the fact that so many people are dying. Um, and, you know, and I... I, I tell you i mean you might say uh well god you're watching russian television <laughs> i find their reporting to be pretty well so far accurate i mean i haven't seen anything that they've reported that has been wrong and so far everything they reported on is is happened so you you tell me i mean go go up and watch it for yourself it's on rumble so anyway uh, uh the western media was porting on glug Dasimov, Gladasimov, well, he just uh, took command of the uh, Russian forces. Now, the Western media will tell you that that is demotion for uh, a Slavenskin, because um, Slavenskin is run, I mean, I tell you what, this guy's a brilliant general. I've been watching his tactics. Uh, it's kind of like um, uh, back in the Civil War, uh, Stonewall Jackson and uh, you know he withdraws when he needs to he attacks when he needs to and uh, and it seems to me he's been minimizing the losses because you know remember Stonewall Jackson was outnumbered in the Civil War by the Union troops uh, sometimes three four five to one and yet he won every almost every battle that he fought until he was uh, assassinated and it could have been, I mean, there was supposed to be an accidental shot from one of his troops, but it probably was a traitor in his midst. Uh, you know, we don't know. I mean, can you travel back to 1863 or whenever uh, Stonewall Jackson was shot? Uh, the greatest general in my, my mind uh, that ever existed. I've, I've read his books. Uh, fascinating. I mean, if you ever want to learn anything about uh, military tactics, but anyway, so this Glodasimov uh, that takes command, uh, basically what you've got is you've got that traitor Millie up in the White House, uh, who's a complete idiot. And then, of course, you've got his leader, which is Austin, which is another complete idiot in, in command of our military. Uh, Glodasimov um, was over uh, Slovenkin. And so what does this mean? It, well, it means a trading off. Now, the Western media says that, that, that 
Slara Vikskin. God knows, I wish I could pronounce these damn Russian names. Uh, who the hell spells words like this? I mean, it's like me going to Poland trying to drive down the streets and all the street signs. I'm looking at them. It just looks like spaghetti on the street signs, even though they're English letters. But uh, anyway, what, what, what this means is it's a whole new phase of the war. Uh, basically, you know, Russia kind of considered this thing as a limited military operation, kind of like we did with, uh, uh, well, Haiti. We're getting ready to invade Haiti. Oh, boy, I bet they're going to fight well. But, um, and so, you know, so as you go up the chain of command, this would be like Austin taking over from that trader Millie. Um, so that's basically what's taking place because now the, 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 the theater, <clears throat> the theater of war has broadened in the Russian perspective. Uh, and I did, I did not know. I mean, I, I just found out tonight how, I mean, well, we, I've been telling you about it and I just, it just sometimes, man, my brain, brain don't work too well, you know, cause I was just like looking at it and I was going like, holy shit. This thing's about to take on whole new dimensions. I mean, this is going to get big. I mean, this is going to get big. And uh, I tell you what, I wouldn't want to be a Ukrainian right now. I, I No way, no how. Um, so anyway, um, if you're following the news, you know that Solidar is, is done. Uh, there are uh, hundreds of Ukrainians that are surrendering to the, to the Russians, but evidently there are still a few holding out. And you know what? I feel sorry for these guys. I mean... Yeah, and yeah, and the thing is, though, they're surrendering to Russian Russian mercenaries who are pretty, um, well, questionable to surrender to. I mean, you know, it's just like uh, in Stalingrad, uh, when the Germans surrendered to the Russians, the Russians massacred the German. There was 93,000 soldiers, and I did a video on this uh, way back. 93,000 um, uh, Germans surrendered, and only like 5,000 of them survived. So you don't know how they're gonna, these prisoners of war are going to get treated. So maybe fight to the death, right? I don't know. I mean, but uh, I, 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 I think, I think in in this case, I would take my chances with surrender. Uh, but there, there's still still some fighting left uh, going on there. But it's it's not going to last long. Uh, this is another new development that I did not know about. Is uh, there's tuberculosis uh, spreading throughout the uh, Ukrainian army because of the poor conditions with what their, the troops are being um, treated. Uh, so that's always been, you know, in any war, um, that's always something that you want to worry about is disease spreading through your troops. Uh, so that's that's a that's a big deal. I mean, I, I in World War One, uh, especially in those trenches. Uh, well, the mustard gas and everything, I mean, it, that killed a lot of other troops, but uh, the diseases uh, in that time uh, killed many more. I mean, a lot, a lot of times more than fighting. Uh, I, yeah, and I found out about the Bradley vehicles. We're, we're providing them, well, supposedly someday with outdated vehicles. Uh, the question is, is how long uh, can the Ukrainians hold out for us to bring in all the equipment from behind their, uh, their lines? Well... This is what I'm going to get to in a minute. So to hold on, you got to you got to stay to the last of the video because I'm going to get into what's going to happen. And uh, so anyway, I did not know. I did not know because right now Russia, like I taught, yeah, I did a video yesterday on the um, uh, the mercenaries that are fighting. So Russia really, I mean, and there's some pair the Russian paratroopers involved uh, with the. Um, uh, Bakhmut, uh, the whole uh, offensive there, the Solodar. Uh, so there are Russian troops involved, but it's very minimal. Russia is basically just kind of consolidating everything behind the lines. And like I told you, their industry is ramped up to, they're on, they're on, they're on World War II footing at this point. And, and so the, the amount of hardware and and, and artillery shells and these these new T ninety two tanks. I I dare say they could take on an M one Abram. I, from what I'm understanding, and they're building planes and they're ramping up their nuclear forces. I mean, we, we you poked the bear. You poked the bear, Biden. Yeah, thank God for the Democrats. Thank God for the Democrats. Holy shit, this thing's gonna go. Woo, this is gonna get crazy. So yeah, and, and so right now a lot of money's going to our industrial military complex. Uh, they're profiting immensely. Uh, by the way, I, I just uh, just just 
you know, the thing that infuriated me, another thing was, uh, you know, there was a Democrat politician. He wants to put a, a Zelensky bust up in the, in the, in the, in the Congress building uh, in honor of Zelensky uh, for his wonderful uh, uh, leadership in Ukraine. But yet we're tearing down uh, all of our uh, uh, Jefferson and Washington and all of our forefather monuments all around the country because uh, these leftist lunatics, that's what they want to do. So I guess that's just kind of it. I mean, I was like, holy shit. So what I want to tell you, within the next, uh, I'd say, three or four weeks, uh, we'll see. I, I, and, you know, I'm wrong. I'm wrong about a lot of things. You know, I, I always call out where I'm wrong. Uh, my predictions for, for 2022 were pretty accurate, uh, and I called out where I was wrong. I didn't think we would have an election. We did. I uh, don't think it was, uh, well, it was questionable, let's just say. So, uh, it, so that was one prediction that was kind of wrong. But I'm going to tell you, I think within the next three weeks, because what's the buildup uh, has been, it's, it's, it's beyond imagination. I mean, the Russians are just, this is all out war, man, for them. They, they, they're done. They, and, and then, of course, you know, there are people posing like a 38 parallel along uh, uh, some place. That, that, you know, but the thing is, the Russians aren't going to accept that. They don't want NATO building up. Uh, the, the, the whole reason this war came about was because, you know, NATO built up Ukraine to these. Do you think Ukraine was manufacturing all these weapons? No, NATO was giving them to them to fight. They, they wanted this war. They wanted uh, Ukraine to fight Russia. Well, now the, Russia, the, the, Russia, the NATO weapons are being depleted and Russia's taking them all out. Russia is not going to accept anything but a government in Ukraine that is friendly to Russia. Now, that doesn't mean that they're going to subjugate Ukraine. That just means that they're, they're not going to accept any more NATO influence in Russia. No way know how, no way this thing ends until this thing is completely washed out. And unfortunately, the uh, Ukrainians are going to suffer. So what am I predicting? Um, well, I think we'll see how it goes. I would not be surprised to see a 1917 inversion of the Ukrainian military turning around and marching on Kiev <laughs> and taking out the government and saying enough is enough. We'll see. I mean, I don't know. You tell me. Leave a comment below. What are you seeing about the war? I'm just trying to give you my assessment of everything. It's uh, it's 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 beyond. I I, I don't know where these globalist uh, lunatics are, are thinking that you know when you poke the bear, you poke the bear. This is what you get. Russia. Let's see. Napoleon lost. Uh, Hitler lost. You know. When you poke the bear, it, it's just, it's, it's utter stupidity to go up against a major nuclear power in this fashion. And uh, it, I, boy, I hope, I hope that uh, something comes out of this positive and maybe in, in the next five years, we'll have a new government and uh, that one that's sane and uh, wants peace and prosperity, uh, just basically, uh, uh, buying Russian resources. I don't know, man, but this this is this has gone insane. But this this force, this force that's coming across with all these new T ninety two tanks. I mean, I the numbers that I'm seeing, hundreds of thousands of U.S. or Russian troops. They're holding everything in reserve. Everything is held in reserve. What they put out to take Bakhmar or, or and Solodar is nothing to what's coming. This offensive is going to be massive. Peace out, stay free, and it's good, good, good to live in the free state of Florida. Whew, God save the Ukrainians. Oh, hey, let's listen to one more second of this. Near the Borussia and Nova Ivanovka of the Borussia region, as well as 76 artillery units at their firing positions, manpower and military equipment in 123 areas. Counter battery warfare operation resulted in destruction of three Ukrainian fighting vehicles equipped with Grad MLRS near Kubiansk, Petropavlovka in Karpov region, and Ivanovka in Donetsk People's Republic. Two US manufactured M777 and M100. So I want to ask you, how many times have we heard 
U.S. media kind of given a breakdown of uh, Ukrainian losses or Russian losses. This this is reported every single day. It was kind of like when Trump was doing those uh, COVID uh, videos, and uh, you got to watch them every single day, and uh, we just wanted to know what was going on. This is what Russia does for their people every day. Why do you think they're so much on board with the war? Of course, the Western media will tell you, no, they, they can't stand the war. But let's just listen for a second more. Nine Paladin artillery systems near the Zavoy and Peshele of the Donetsk People's Republic. Two Gwazdika self-propelled housers near Borlatskoye of the Donetsk People's Republic and Orekhov of the Zaporozhye region. One U.S. manufactured ANTPQ-50 counter-battery of Fire Raider has been destroyed near the Zavoy of the Donetsk People's Republic. Fighter aircraft of the Russian Aerospace Forces has shot down one Su-25 airplane of the Ukrainian Air Force near Kanorovka of the Donetsk People's Republic. Air defense facility have destroyed five Ukrainian unmanned aerial vehicles near Starobelsk, Chervonobovka, Sofiyevka of Lugansk People's Republic, Nikolskoye of Donetsk People's Republic, as well as three rocket-propelled projectiles launched by Hammers and Volkheim of Arrest near Molochansk and Chistopolye of the Zaporozhye region. In total, 372 airplanes and 200 helicopters, 2,873 unmanned aerial vehicles, 400 air defense missile systems, 7,486 tanks and other armored combat vehicles, 979. So let me read off the latest Russian numbers because I do like to give these because the Russians are the only one that report on this. So 372 airplanes, 200 helicopters, uh, 2,873 unmanned aerial vehicles, uh, 400 air defense missile systems, 7,486 tanks and other armored fighting vehicles, 979 mark multiple rocket launchers, 3,813 field artillery cannons and mortars, 8,019 special military motor vehicles. These are the latest numbers re reported as of the 12th of January, 2023 by the Russian military television. Now, wouldn't you love to see some numbers out of Ukraine or NATO or uh, Washington, D.C. to refute these numbers? I don't see anything. All they do is just spin, 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 spin. Gaslight, 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 gaslight. That's all that I ever see. So there you go, man. That's the latest on the war, and I can't believe I made a third video. <laughs> but I was just fishing around. And when I saw the numbers of the tanks and all of the... the, the I mean, these are mechanized battalions that are waiting behind the enemy lines. Uh, and basically, they just sent in the, the, the Wagner. I talked about Wagner yesterday and... And so they're just kind of holding back, training their troops, uh, getting ready for a massive. And that's why the, there's a new command in Russia, um, because they wanted to, to bring it up to the, up the chain of command. Now, that doesn't mean that they demoted the guy that was in charge. In fact, he got a medal back in uh, December from Putin. So he's still well respected. He's still going to be there. And um, uh, so he's, he's going to be still commanding troops. I wonder what's going to happen to the, the Wagner mercenaries. Uh, the paratroopers, are, they're, they're going to be moved around. We're going to, this is going to get hot, and it's going to get interesting within here in the next, uh, well, couple months. Um, anyway, that's it. Peace out. Stay free. And it's good, good, good to live in the free, free state of Florida.